in celebration of the fact that uh, our friend and brother Reverend Jenkins is here with us on today, we ask that you use as our sermon topic this morning, this means war. I've got God on my side and I can't go back. This means war. I've got God on my side and I can't go back. Our scripture today uh, really deals with uh, miracles. And uh, I dare say, as I've been blessed to pastor Ebenezer, there is a miracle here at Ebenezer that probably is as great as any miracle that we've had a chance to experience. And you had a chance to hear from Matthew uh, Redding as he read the testimony, uh, this uh, poem to the fathers. But right now I'm going to ask if Matthew and on this Father's Day, if his father could come and stand with him. Matthew literally was almost pronounced dead in November of 2019. He was on life support. And we give the Lord's name the praise this last academic year. He got all A's. <laughs> so I just wanted Matthew to just come briefly to give his testimony. Amen, Matthew. Good morning, church. How are y'all doing today? So in November 2019, I was in a car accident and I came and got diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury and problem with my eye. And then, and then I was in the hospital for a couple of months. After that, I was transferred to a rehab facility in DC, NRH, and I rehab there. And then in seventh grade, I'm, I'm getting ready to go to ninth grade now, by the way. I'm going to go to ninth grade now. Um, Bishop McNamara, I got accepted there. They gave me a presidential scholarship and a music scholarship for my trombone. I was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury and an eye nerve problem, and I learned how to talk, write, and walk again. God has been able to heal me. He has been able to work wonders for me. Like the sermon topic said, I, I turned and I can't go back. So he's really helped me. He's, he's taught me to do everything over again, and now I kind of have to keep going with it, and I can't ever go back. Can you give Matthew Redding a hand praise? I wanted to share that miraculous testimony because it was during the men's season uh, in 2019 was the first time I had a chance to actually meet Matthew in terms of actually knowing who he was. He was working with his father on Saturday before a uh, men's day uh, with all the men's day activities. And I dare say just from that brief 10 minute meeting, I had not met uh, such an outstanding young man during my time. He, he literally, he literally had never gotten a grade lower than A+. Plus. <laughs> Through his entire, at that time, seventh grade, he was in a traumatic car accident, uh, school bus accident. He literally, as was shared, almost lost his life. He could not walk, he could not talk, he could not write. He had one of those braces around his neck for over two months. But Matthew claimed that even though it was in November, he told his doctors he would be out of the hospital by January 15th. The doctors politely said, oh, this is just another young man with little hope. But his mother and father instilled in him that if God told him and that angels had come to him, that he was going to stand on the word of God. And can you give Brother Redding and Sister Redding, they literally spent two years having to be by their son's side. Uh, Brother Redding literally had to spend almost a year out of work. We thank the Lord for the Department of Navy that allowed him to do that. But they were by their son's side. I found out that uh, Matthew liked the Washington Nationals. I was honored a few years ago to throw out the first pitch. They gave me a uniform. I gave it to Matthew. Matthew wore it until January 15th. And on January 15th, despite what the doctor said, he came out of the hospital. <laughs> Isn't God good and worthy to be praised? And that's his sister Gabrielle, who was also in the same bus accident. But look at what God has done for Gabrielle as well.
Can you look at somebody and tell them, God is a miracle worker. And that is really what we're going to be sharing and believing God for these next few months. That there's a miracle with your name on it. Blessings are nice. All of us want blessings. But miracles are things that only God can do. There's going to be a miracle for someone in your health. There's going to be a miracle for someone in your family. There's going to be a miracle for someone in your finances. There's going to be a miracle that I'm believing that you need to claim it. You need to believe it. And don't let anybody push you back. When they told Matthew, when Matthew told them January 19th, the doctors under their breath literally laughed at him. But they ain't laughing no more because he's a miracle. Amen. And everywhere brother and sister Redding goes, that miracle is with them. Everywhere they go, that miracle is with them. Does anyone else in the congregation today have a miracle <laughs> that other people know about? Uh, Reverend uh, Robeson, be so kind to sit where you were sitting last week. If you remember last week, Peter and John were in a, the temple towards a gate called Beautiful, and they came up across a crippled man. And they said, silver and gold have I none, but that which I have we give unto you. And they told the crippled man to rise. They took him by the hand and said, rise. And he started, and he rose to his feet, started running, started praising God. So everywhere Peter and John went, the crippled man, now healed man, was going with them. Wherever they went, the testimony went with them. And so as the time passed, Peter was preaching. And the temple police came and arrested Peter and John because the religious leaders, especially the Sadducees, didn't like this testimony. They didn't like this testimony, one, because they didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. And if Jesus had risen from the dead and the power from that resurrection allowed this man to be healed, their theological position of no resurrection was cut in half. They also didn't like it politically because politically the Sadducees were in cahoots with the Roman government. And everything that the Roman government felt that they needed to do to keep the Jewish people under control, it was a case by which they asked the Sadducees to do it. So the Sadducees, the chief priest, and uh, his son-in-law, the other chief priest, came and put together all of their temple guards and came and arrested Peter and John. And in the middle of the sermon, they arrested them and brought them to what is called the Sanhedrin court. I'm going to ask if the people, if our brothers and sisters in the ministerial staff be so kind to stand. And as they came to the Sanhedrin court, it was 70 of the most powerful religious leaders. As they came to the Sanhedrin court, they didn't like the fact that Peter and John were preaching. But the thing they hated was this testimony. And everywhere Peter and John went, the, this testimony... <laughs> Cause the religious leaders to say, we, if we, could do, we can do something about them. But this testimony behind them, we got to get rid of. Brother Randall, if you'll try and take Reverend Robeson to your seat right there. So the temple police tried to get the testimony. And because they didn't like the testimony. The, the Project 1619, they don't like our testimony. So they try to say... What happened really didn't happen. But the testimony keeps coming up. <laughs> they, they, didn't, they didn't like our testimony. So they call it critical race theory. You can take. You can take. <laughs> and so they tried to take our testimony. But Supreme Court Justice Jackson <laughs> came up. <laughs> so, so throughout all of this, the testimony <laughs> keeps following them. And the Sanhedrin court didn't like it. So they said, we know you, Peter. We know by the mere fact of our power that if we threaten you enough, you'll deny Jesus. If we threaten you enough, you'll be the one that will go back fishing. If we threaten you enough, you'll be the one that will step back instead of stepping forward. So Peter, we want to tell you, if you keep talking about this man, Jesus... 
We're going to do to you what we did to Jesus. We're going to crucify you. We're going to pierce you. We're going to put all kinds of challenges on you. So you better back up from this. But the problem was this testimony. <laughs> he kept following him. And, and so they began to be concerned. We can scare Peter. But the testimony, so they asked Peter and the testimony, the crippled man, to leave. And so after they left, they said, what are we going to do? The whole city knows about this testimony, and we can't kill the testimony even though we can kill Peter. So let's do this. We'll threaten Peter and say, Peter and John, if you keep talking about this man Jesus, we're going to crucify you like we did him. And so they brought Peter and the testimony back in. And, and they said, shut up. Oh, we're not going to do anything. Are we going to do everything we can to you? And from this, Peter and John said, are you crazy? And the Sanhedrin court said, you're uneducated men. You're unlearned men. You, you, don't, you shouldn't know all this Old Testament. But, but Peter and John said, do you actually think we're going to obey you more than we obey Jesus? You're, cuckoo, you're more cuckoo than Cocoa Puffs. We're going to stand on the fact that my testimony has come from the power of Jesus. Yeah, I know I didn't go to school like you went to school. I know I haven't had the resources like you have the resources. I know I don't have the political power that you have. I know I don't have the economic power that you have. I know I don't have the scholastic power that you have. But I've got another power. And his name is Jesus. And everywhere I go, I got this testimony behind me to let you know in the name of Jesus, that which was crippled can come back to life again. Despite what you have done, I want you to know I still got a testimony. Despite the fact that you crucified him, despite the fact that you put nails in his hands, despite the fact you put a sword in his side, despite the fact you put a crown on his head, despite the fact you hung him high and stretched him wide, despite the fact that you put him in the ground and you thought he died, but early to Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Despite the fact you took us from Africa, despite the fact you took our language, despite Despite the fact you took our culture, despite the fact you took our name, despite the fact a hundred million of us died on the Middle Passage, despite the fact we had to go on the Middle Passage and come to these shores, and on, those, on these shores you had auction blocks that sold us to the highest bidder, despite the fact they had to work from can't see in the morning to can't see at night, despite the fact you raped our woman, despite the fact you castrated our, our brothers, despite the fact you made us work and made America rich. It was not George Washington. It was not Thomas Jefferson. But we work free for you. Can you imagine how much money you would make if everybody in here work free for you and then multiply that by 10 million? Yes, you would be rich. We would be poor. But don't give yourselves the credit. It was because of America got rich because of how we work from cancer. Despite the fact you told us we can't vote. Despite the fact you said we could not marry. Despite the fact you said we can't own businesses despite the fact you had laws and when you lynched us you did nothing when you shot us you did nothing despite the fact so I've got a testimony don't ever think I made it because I'm so smart don't ever think I made it because I'm so strong but if it had not been for the Lord on my side I don't know where I would be because I can't give up now I won't give up now I've come too far to turn around now for the Lord is on my side so I can't give up do I have some brothers who got a testimony where you used to be a testimony what you used to do and folk laughed at you and thought you could never be what you now are but God has done exceedingly God has done abundantly God has done some miracles do I have any men today that have a testimony of what God has done but I've got good news if God gave you a testimony yesterday look at what God is getting ready to do tomorrow you ain't seen nothing yet the miracle you've been waiting for 
brothers and sisters is on the way your healing miracle your deliverance miracle your financial miracle your education miracle your family miracle brothers a miracle to be a father a miracle to be a husband a miracle to be a grandfather they thought they killed us but hallelujah can you look at a brother and tell him we're still here and we're wiser we're stronger and we're better because we've got a testimony do i have any brothers in the house who knows that this means war and the war we're fighting put down your guns hallelujah attorney general brave boy does not want you to be into her prisons put away your guns put away your don't even try to fight your way out of this this is not by might this is not by power but this is by my spirit saith the lord do i have any brothers that are going to be strong in the power of god so when peter was asked how did this happen he said it was because i was filled with the holy ghost do i have some brothers that are filled with the holy spirit and because of that your testimony wherever you go you can't shake it wherever you go you can't back it up because god is on your side can you give the lord's name the praise for the testimony god has given you for the testimony god is giving you but i declare in the name of jesus that what god has done for matthew god's getting ready to do for you and you ain't seen nothing yet can you look at a brother or sister and say wait till your miracle happens wait for your miracle to happen and the bible says that when peter and john went back to a prayer meeting the ground began to shake get ready the ground is getting ready to shake shake up doctors shake up politicians shake up educators shake up this nation shake up this world how do i know nelson mandela shook up this world barack obama shook up this world yeah those who've been our foremothers and forefathers shook up this world because of what god has done and if you're the beneficiary of a big mama if you're the beneficiary of a big daddy if you're the beneficiary of a grandpa grandma mother or father can you give the lord's name the praise because you cannot let their testimony die by your lack of faith but if you're like me and you believe there's a miracle on the way because somebody prayed for you had you on their mind took a little time to pray for you a daddy prayed for you a mama prayed for you a big mama prayed for you a granddaddy prayed for you and they're looking down from heaven and saying you go boy you go girl can't stop won't stop because i know that god has given me everything i stand in need of testimony yeah testimony yeah testimony does anybody have a testimony how he healed your body how he made a way out of no way how he picked you up turned you around planted your feet on solid ground you don't always have nor did you always look like how you look today but if you know that God has blessed you with a testimony can you give the Lord's name the honor the praise and the glory brother Randall can you come and try and take my testimony away again hallelujah they try and take it but it keeps coming back <laughs> it keeps coming back for us as a people they try to take it but it keeps coming back on uh, June 19th, 1865, we have a testimony. Yeah, we have a testimony. The day before, June 16th, June 18th rather, the slaves who in Texas were working in the field. They were picking cotton like they usually did. 
They were picking tobacco like they usually did. They were whipped like they usually were. They were raped like they usually were. Castrated like they usually were. And they were wondering, is this ever going to end? Is this ever going to end? And then all of a sudden, General Gordon Granger came marching into Galveston, Texas. He went to Reedy Chapel, African Methodist Episcopal Church, stood up and read this proclamation and said, by the order of the executive of the United States, all slaves are now declared free. <laughs> that was on June 19, 157 years ago. You want to look at somebody and say, I believe in miracles because the day is a miracle. Here they were, a slave one day, but the next day woke up free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. That's why this is a Jubilee day, because our testimony is not only what he's done for you, but what he's done for us as a people. And if you know that for yourself, can you give the Lord's name the praise, the honor, and the glory? Can you stand all over the church? We celebrate all of those who are running and all of those who are seeking and all of those who have sought uh, political uh, offices. The reason why we do is because the very land that you're now standing on was owned by the Ku Klux Klan. Reverend Porter, my father in ministry from Washington, D.C., he would now probably be around 90 or so. If he lived in Washington, he knew after midnight he could not come in Prince George's County. Just by coming to the county, he would be beaten. Just by coming into the county, he had his life threatened. Prince George's County was not a place that a black person would come into without having a reason for being here. But now look what God has done. I said, look what God has done. We've got a testimony. I said, we in Prince George's County have a testimony. Yeah. And so it's not just for us individually, not just for us as a people nationally, but those of us who live in this county, we ought to give the Lord's name, the honor, the praise, and the glory. I can't turn back because the Lord has been on my side. Can you look at a brother or sister and tell them, I can't turn back either. Because I've got a testimony that I can't deny. And everywhere I go, I've got to tell somebody what God has done. Do I have a witness in the house? Everyone who has a testimony that one day Jesus saved your soul and made you whole, can you give the Lord's name the praise, the honor, the glory, hallelujah.